Greetings, Starfighter. You have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Sewer and the Kodan Armada. Get ready. Prepare for blast off. You are listening to Monster Noir with your hosts, John Johnson and Laja Crowley. And welcome to the first ever edition of Monster Noir. I'm John Johnson. With me is Laja Crowley. Who's way cooler than basically he's the cooler side of the pillow. I'm the hot side of the pillow. You flip it over, you get give both sides. Of, does that work? Yin yang? How's that work? That'll work. Just as smooth as the cool side of the pillow. There you go. All right, we're here to talk about monsters. And we're the hardest thing we got to do is our first episode is to get everything started. Um we made our top 10 overall horror movie list of all time, which I've never done before. I've had like my top three picks before, but I've never done my top 10. So this was a difficult process. How was it for you? Yeah, no, it was way harder than I thought. Cause I told you originally, I get it. I can write down my 10 right now. And I started making a list and go like, Oh God, I need to add more movies though. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to challenge each other slightly. We're not going to give the title of the movie. We're going to go, we're going to start our tens and we're going to give a, a year, oh, what, oh, not the year. We'll give a quote and a prop from the movie and see if the other guy can guess who what the movie is. Um, and so just people in the, in the comments, uh, we won't be answering comments uh, at this time, but uh, if you hang out throughout the whole show, I'm going to invite some people in to come talk to us at the, for the after party or after hours. We'll call it the uh, Monster Noir After Hours. Noir, noir, noir. Ooh, there you go. All right, so let's start. You start. What's your number 10? Give me a quote and a prop, and I'll see if I can guess it. All right, so my number 10 is definitely a tomb Tomb. that invokes time travel. Oh, shit. And um, the biggest thing the devil ever did was convince everybody that he didn't exist. And it's not the movie you're thinking about. I know yeah, that's that's a uh, usual suspects, mm-hmm. but uh, but I know that's not horror. God, a, t- a tomb that invokes time travel. So easy. Is it? Because <laughs> I feel like I'm completely off on this one. A tomb that invokes time travel. I don't know. I actually really don't know. You ready? I'm ready. Give it to me. Prince of Darkness, 1987. God damn it, Carpenter. God damn it. I'm gonna hate myself for a long time on that one. <laughs> Damn it. Because I was looking through the quotes and they had this long, cool quote that I had pulled up, but I remember one of the guys said that. You know, like, great film, by the way. If y'all have never seen Prince of Darkness, oh my God. Why to make your top 10? Um, Honestly, Mm -hmm. it was the first movie that didn't scare me, but it unsettled me. Everything about that movie from the flies crawling up and all the insects to the end of the movie, like seeing what went on, because it's very a shocking ending because you don't figure out, because the whole time you hear this tone coming through, like yeah, this yeah. message is coming through the radio, and then at the end you go like, holy shit, that's that's what's happening? You know, yeah. so that's that's exactly why it, it's, it, it was my 10. So just so everybody knows, there will be spoilers with all these, we're gonna talk about these movies in depth. So, 100%. So there is spoilers for all these, but most likely you do the ten year mark is probably passed with those all, all of them, I would imagine. Yeah, I'm so glad you said that because I was thinking that as I was saying, you need to watch this movie. By the way, this is how it <laughs> ends. <laughs> uh, let's see. The only tidbit I know on that, uh, John Carpenter gave me my the best piece of advice in my filmmaking career. He told me to do three jobs on a movie so I could put my name above the title because they don't remember directors. But they really don't. That's why he does scores, so you can actually be John Carpenter, so and so. So I did, um, I did score, I did uh, writing, I did producing, I did three jobs to so be John Johnson. That's why everybody knows who I am, it's because John Carpenter told me to put my name above the title. Right. That was the best advice I ever got. All right, here's my number ten. All right. The quote is, "The timeless secrets of Orion." Oh, or, 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 excuse me. I'm starting again. Sisyphus. I get the name right. The timeless secret uh, secrets of Arcissus will animate these life into life. God damn it! Let me try this again. The timeless secrets of. Oh, I'm glad I can edit this. <clears throat> this is the first time I've ever said this, right? The timeless, <laughs> <laughs> the timeless secrets of Arcissus will once again animate the, the the lifeless. God damn it! I'm gonna try one more time. The timeless secrets of Arcissus 
Well, once ah, fuck, right, give me a second. I think I, I got it though. I, I, no, I, we'll give me give. I'm, 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 the timeless secrets of Osiris will once again animate the lifeless, and the prop is puppets. Oh shit! Now I know I got it. What you got? It's Puppet Masters. Which one? Uh, two, four. Is it four? Four was my favorite because uh, four there was like a hero involved. Like there was like it's uh, it wasn't when puppets go good. That was the the World War Three one or War Two one in the part three. But part four was like there was the guy, the kid who was like trying to animate like a little robot toy, and then all of a sudden he found the puppets. Right. I loved movie. That movie was so much fun. Like it was just such a cool idea. Is that the one where the demons came? The little mini demons came to yeah. fight too. Yeah. Like you puppets. stole the the yeah. human stole this this secrets from us. So I love okay. that idea of the good puppets. Like they used to the basically the killers of the first three movies became the good guys of the third fourth film. Right. It's always that twist in movies like that. Like uh, uh Freddy became a good guy. Like just some movie where Freddie's like, well, fuck it, I'll just have to fight him myself. Right. <laughs> Freddie, the master of breaking the fourth wall. He's no, looking. That's my, it's my favorite full moon movie, and there had to be a full moon movie on here somewhere. It's, it's definitely a full moon. Full yeah, moon. <laughs> it, really it really is. All right, what's your number nine? Uh, hmm. I'm going to go to my secondary list. Uh, all right. What was a good quote from that? Uh, I got one quote, and it's so easy. So oh, right. the, I mean, the props is Tombstone, and the quote is, they're coming to get you, Barbara. Night of the Living Dead. Oh, yeah. Um, Which is an amazing film. Great movie. It's uh, so good that you like you don't even remember all the mistakes in it. I didn't until I started dealing with people that critique movies and they oh, start sure. putting stuff out, and I'm like, oh well, you know. I mean, that, that, I mean like like Plan Nine, like uh, Plan Nine from Outer Space was made fun of because you can see the boom mic. You see the boom mic in Night of the Living Dead too. But I do remember a couple scenes in the basement. In the basement, you see the boom mic and the shadow from the boom mic. Exactly, but the movie's so good, no one cares. Mm-hmm. Which is pretty amazing. Oh, oh I got to ask you a question because I know you know. The scream when the little girl is stabbing her mom. What is that scream from? Because everybody used that that scream. Is it is it was originally dead for that movie or did they take it from somewhere else? I think that scream was originally recorded for that movie, and then people started using it from that. Because okay. that movie dead is public domain. Because they, right. they, lost, they lost their copyright, which is why Walking Dead exists. Because Walking Dead is basically a sequel to Night of the Living Dead. That couldn't exist if that movie was a public domain. Oh, okay. So like, um, but that they took the screen from that because it became public domain. At least I think it could be wrong, but I'm pretty certain that's that's the way it went. You know, it's it's that scream and it's the guy screaming. That, that's the that's Wilhelm cool. scream, which is from a western uh, from the '50s. And the other, the second one is the Howie Long scream, which actually wasn't recorded for. Um, it's the like that the yeah. It's actually called like it was from a, a, C, a CD. It was just like Man Screams number 283 or something like that. And they used it as Howie Long in uh, Broken Arrow and became super famous. Mm -hmm. The other one that most people don't realize is James Brown. Wow! Like from, um, it's in a lot of sci-fi movies. It's the opening line of his song, I Feel Good. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's in a lot of fucking sci-fi movies. Like, I even put it in one of mine because I heard it in a bunch of them. God. It's in Free Jack. It's in, it's actually even in, uh, Young Guns 2, when they're yep. blowing up the town, the guy goes, yow! Like, it's just this great scream. <laughs> Get on a good foot! Ah! Yow! <laughs> All right, here's my number nine. The prop is a wall of ice. Okay. The quote is, it's a sin to bury good money when it can help such good people. Or help poor people. This I, one might be a little harder. I thought, you, I, thought I had it when you said wall of ice, but... It's a sin to bury good money when it can help good people. Talking about burying money with a corpse. I don't know if uh, I was going to say the movie, but I, I don't think it's that because you said burying money with a corpse. I do not know. It is 1943's Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman. There we go. See? See? Here's the thing. 
I didn't put the classic movie list on there that I wanted to put the classic month. Because what a lot of y'all don't understand, a lot of people don't catch, uh, count the classic horror movies and horror anymore. They don't count, um, you know, Frankenstein versus Wolfman. They don't count Dracula exactly. horror anymore. So, yeah. Well, I mean, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman made my list just because, you one, you learn so much more about the Wolfman in that movie than you do in the Wolfman. Right. Like, there's so much you learn about Talbot. But also, it was like, it was the first time two monsters ever met each other. It's like the first time they said, let's try something. And, like, they just went to, like, you know. And do you know who played Frankenstein in that movie? The Frankenstein no. monster? No. Bella Lugosi. I thought, I, wait, that, was that the first time he played it? No. He played it, no, yes. Because he was he was Igor, or Igor, or whatever you want to call it. Igor. In three and four. Ghost of Frankenstein and Son of Frankenstein. And I believe that's the first time he played uh, the monster. I think the only time he played the monster. Right. So why do everybody think Bela Lugosi played him the first time? Well, that's the thing. They don't think. Well, no, here's uh, there's a couple things. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't think. <laughs> <laughs> it was Boris Karloff played him in one and two. Mm -hmm. And three. Um, and then I was telling you the trivia of this. Did you know why uh, Frankenstein's monster is green and like toys and stuff like that? You told me. But you can yeah. tell them. I know because you told me. It was a misprint when they colorized it. They just assumed he was green. And so they like made him green. Even though he was gray and the I, actually on set, he was supposed to be gray. And the filmmakers were like, "What'd you do? Like we made him green? What? It was a Technicolor snafu." Ugh. The, but see, that's the thing too. Yeah, you told me that too. It's only from the fourth movie because he was blinded in the fourth movie in Bell. Or no, uh, yeah, he was blinded in the fourth movie. So everybody thought this was Frankenstein, even though if you clearly watch the earlier films, he's not blind at all. Right. But for some reason, that one iconic scene of him looking like he did this scan and he yeah. like looks and stuff. So, that's one of the greatest lines in horror history, which is from part two We belong dead. Such a good line. Well, but see, y'all also got to realize too to the viewers that a lot of times what you think is lore isn't, it's just, it might not like, like he just said, it wasn't the first movie this happened, it was like the fourth. Yeah. It's just like when you do, um, a lot of times when you do impressions. You're not doing the impression of the person. You're doing the impression of the guy who the, made it famous. Yeah. Right. Right. Because everybody does Christopher Walken, but they're really doing Jay Moore doing Christopher Walken from like back in the day. Right. Well, the other thing too with like these, the, we we we'll have a whole podcast on classic monster movies. But um, the one thing that most people don't realize is that like right now, if I wanted to make a Frankenstein sequel, I can sit down and watch all the Frankenstein movies. There was mm -hmm. no way for anybody to do that. They put them in the theater and then they were gone. Right. So like when they wrote like sequels to movies, they don't even remember seeing the first one. They were drunk and saw it like a year ago, but they can't watch it again. So they would just write, write a sequel and assume that everybody saw it or you know, or just started from scratch. The other thing is that the first comedy horror film of all time was The Bride of Frankenstein. Comedy? Yeah. If you go back and watch it, there's scenes with a landlord who is just batshit crazy. Oh, she's a grave robber. That's what it was. And her, her comedy is like it's super comedy mixed in with horror. It's the first time it ever happened. It's a little, it's a little jarring because she's so over the top and everybody else is so like, like really into their moment. But because that's a really dark movie as well. But like, yeah, because uh, it's dark. Like yeah. I know it's dark. It's been years since I watched it, but I know it's a dark ass movie for sure. She came in and, and she also played another part in. Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name, but she also played another part in. Um, uh, the first uh, Invisible Man. She was the landlord, and she was a like a grave robber or gypsy in, uh, um, Bride of Frankenstein. It worked I, better in Invisible Man. I, I I I would admit this. Invisible Man, I have not seen. I've seen bits and pieces, but I never seen and watched it. Like, I think I watched, like, the second one or something. But I know it's one I got to go back and watch because I told you about Creature of the Black Lagoon. Like, I was in my 30s when I watched that movie, and that movie's great. Well, but, yeah, I mean, the sequels, too, are really good, The both sequels. Um, and the second one has the first Clint Eastwood role. Oh yeah, <laughs> he was like a scientist. Before he started people. Can, can we just pause for a second for y'all can picture Clint Eastwood as a scientist? Just, I know. Just, he's got like, nice like, looks like Teeny Bob. <laughs> like, Hi, I'm Clint Eastwood. I'm here for science. <laughs> Blind. Blind. Right, what's your number eight? Oh, wait, do you? Yeah, you're number eight. Do your number nine. All right. So, 
you're gonna get this instantly. So I know this movie backwards and forwards. Yeah. But so I'm gonna make it harder. Marionette puppets is one of the props in this movie. Nightmare on Street Three. God damn it! Yeah. <laughs> 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 he got this so fast because that was just a cool scene it was it was my favorite kill of the entire franchise and um um i was gonna do um i was gonna do kincaid oh yeah oh, no, no more no more oh, yeah. damn that was fast but that okay so the reason why this had to make my list yeah it's because i i had night terrors and a movie oh, yeah. about a demon killing you in your sleep helped me with my night terrors because that movie proved to me that you can control your dreams. That's awesome. And oh man, so many are kind of close. This is so, it, Sharon. Your big break in TV. <laughs> that's when Freddy really became Freddy. Like, and it wasn't it wasn't Craven doing it this time. It was directed by Fred. Uh, not, um, not, uh, oh god, the guy who did Walking Dead. He also did The Mist. Shit. Oh man, Mist. I can see that now, though. What is his name? Um, uh, the, I'll have to write it later. Uh, edit in now his name, because John's an idiot. <laughs> but, all right, there, the name's in there. Um, Frank Darabont. Okay. Um, that was his uh, directorial debut, I think, was uh, part three. It was a great movie. Like, every, great. Every, there's nothing, and by the way, a young yeah. Lawrence Fitzberg is in there, uh, Mr. Morpheus himself. That's right. Um, what most people also don't realize is that other than part one, all the Nightmare on Elm Streets are first time directors. Really? Yeah, they're all first time. They tried them out. Um, uh, even the, it was a female director did part six, um, but she like, they all worked for the studio and then they just basically became directors for one movie. Hmm. I mean, they, that's, 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 started, that's amazing. amazing. You want to put that in there, you know, like. I got one story to tell you about Nightmare on Elm Street 3. I went on a haunted trail walk with Kincaid, the actor, which I can't remember his name right now. And he got so scared, he ran, but he ran back the way we came. And I didn't chase after him. So like, he goes, ah, and like runs back. And then he chase <laughs> him. Ah! And like, we just got through that. And he ran back into it. And I just heard Kincaid screaming with chainsaws. We needed him acting like Kincaid in more movies. I think it should have been a Kincaid and almost everything like oh yeah yeah he was badass and even when he died he died like in part four he, he just gets stabbed he's like i'll see you in hell like he's just a badass character tell him, tell him freddy sent you Kristen, freddy's back <laughs> it was it was kind of like even freddy had like a respect for him you know like there was like like he, he, he did the big thing he just stabs him and says tell him freddy sent you it was like really like you know it wasn't he didn't make a joke he literally just it was like a like a western showdown kind of thing right God, that was such a good movie. Oh, my God. All right. So here's my number eight. <clears throat> Never invite a vampire into your house, you silly boy. It renders you powerless. Lost boys. Exactly. I knew that. Our list are probably going to intersect a lot. All right. So that's the reason why I'm glad I did um, um, two lists. So I'm going I'm to check that off, off my list and go to my alternate list because that's definitely on there. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, the problem I chose was holy water inside of a water gun. First time that was done too, I think. That's what I was just thinking because I know the first time I ever saw it was Dead Alive, or Barry mm -hmm. or Brain Dead, but I think that came after Lost Boys. I don't know which one came first. Lost Boys came first. Yeah, I think Dead Alive and Brain Dead was '90s, right? I think what '89, '90. Yeah, Close and then they did it again in uh, Night of the Demons Two, which is definitely '90s. So oh, I yeah. think Lost Boys was the first fucking movie to put holy water in a water gun. I believe so. Which they barely even use in the movie. They use it against uh, right before Death by Stereo. Death by Stereo. Real monster bastards. The meanest, the baddest. Eh, love that movie. So he knew it wasn't going to be too many quotes that he can do from that movie that wouldn't get. Oh, like, yeah. that, that is my favorite movie. Like, not my favorite horror movie. Like, that. that is my favorite movie. Now, why is it your favorite? Uh, for some reason, like that's one of the, and it's, it's, I'm not trying to be sweet or nothing, but that's like the movies like me and my brother were bond over. Like we was there's arguing. Nothing wrong with we that. Can put on, we can put on Lost Boys, and we can watch it like that. Well, that was just like, movie and like makes. I had a um, hang one second. I'm gonna I'm having a little bit of a attack, so we're gonna pause for a second. We'll get a drink. I'll be right back. All right. Just talk to the people. They can hear you. 
Hi, people. Even though I can't see you, so I can't see your comments. Hi there. My my name is uh, Lajar uh, Aloysius Jones. I am the the deacon of uh, the Church of Darkstone, and uh, today we going we want you to pass around your offering plates. <laughs> So yeah, so this um, first of all, doing doing a, a a black preacher voice will get you in trouble with your mom, one hundred percent of the time. Because mom would be like, "Baby, you don't prank with God. Don't don't you prank with God?" You know. So um, that woman scares me. She's in her seventies and she scares me. Uh, but like Lost Boys, though, from the music to uh, the acting. I know everybody feels certain ways about the chorus, but man, everything about that movie was great. Um, um, I think that they redo, they're doing a sequel, and, and I'm kind of terrified, but I'm gonna watch it because it's Lost Boys. It's just like if you, if somebody say like the superhero movies, let's say I, I don't, I don't like this superhero, but I'm on the lines. If they got a cape and they fly and they got superpowers, then I'm, I'm gonna watch it. Uh, that's just me. Um, but when we was making this list and I was hitting a little bit on it that I can tell exactly what years I start like really appreciating horror movies. Because it went until I got older that I went back and started watching like some of the classics. You know. Uh, but yeah, man, I could gotta take that off my list too. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. But um, but yeah, that, that's the whole thing. Oh, all right, here, here y'all go. <clears throat> so we were talking about impressions, right? So you got to start off like, I tried to do a Morgan Freeman. So you got to start off here. And it, and it, and it. So you get right around here and you drop your voice a little bit lower. And you can say, I remember the time that I met Dark Spade. <laughs> I was sitting around sharpening my shield here comes a guy with an eye patch that has a demon in his body. And I said, well, I don't think that I should play chess with this man, nor should I ever, ever drink that absinthe again. <laughs> so we're not sponsored, but I'm, I'm I'm drinking wine. I found this red wine. I don't drink wine, so like I, well, I should say, I never drink wine. I was just going to say it. I'll, you got to do the pause. I never drink. Wine. Hello, yeah, young I, boys. I never drink. <laughs> <He's nice. laughs> I never drink. <laughs> Why? Anything. Um, Renfield, you idiot. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, yeah. I, uh, I want to get ahead, but um. So the reason why Lost Boys made my list. One, it was, it was um the first color horror film I think I ever saw, other than Ghostbusters, which I still consider horror over anything else. Okay. If that movie came out today, it would be horror. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, but at just, the time, it was like, it, no one knew what to do with it. It's like comedy, action, sci fi, fantasy. Well, that's like um, Shogun Sticks, who was talking about it the other day. He said his favorite scene in that movie was like, initiation over, Michael. Like, that's, he's like, dude, like right then, the movie takes a turn. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was, that's the scene. So, like, okay. So, I had been watching um, black and white horror films like Dracula and all that kind of stuff. Frankenstein meets Dracula or, or Frankenstein meets Wolfman. Um, I had a copy of the script of Frankenstein meets or Dracula meets the Wolfman, but I never actually got to see that. They didn't make the movie, sadly. Um, right. But then my stepfather just came into my life. He said, oh, you're watching vampire movies? You watch Dracula? And I was like, yeah. They like, put in Lost Boys. It's brand new. I went from blah to they're, they're maggots, Michael. I had <laughs> It was such a change in gear. Um, uh, it I managed to like I I still until I was eighteen did not get through the beach scene. I, I covered oh, my eyes. I covered wait, my eyes at the time. Wait, so the scene where they were on the bonfire? Yeah, I, I had not watched that all the way through without until I was like eighteen. Scene. That was such an underrated vicious scene to bite on top of the head, dude. Like. Yeah, which oh, if you go back and look at, I'm not gonna ruin it for you. Never mind, never mind. Uh, we'll make no, I ain't made that. Stop! Don't do, don't do that. Don't do okay, that. but I did approach that scene on my TikTok show. We do do that scene. Okay. 
Okay. Which is hard God. to do. I bet. Without, without, I don't, hopefully we won't get pulled. I don't think we will. I think we're. I think I found a way to do it. Well, I seen one guy doing it. He switched the blood scenes to like black and white real fast, oh, and somehow or another they don't count it. I don't. I don't know. It's it's tough, man. It's well, tough. it's the MPAA. That's why like Kill Bill is like goes to the black and white during the fight scene so they can keep the rating down. Oh, is that why? Yeah, Ian, that's why in Evil Dead Two, there's like fifty thousand different colors of blood. Because if it was red, <laughs> they would have got NC seventeen. Well, they did get NC seventeen the first time. Ugh. Damn, that was a brutal scene, too. All right. So what's what? your number seven? <laughs> um, my number seven, the prop is an old abandoned house. Okay. The scene has a hot gothic chick in it. Night of the Demons. God! It. Damn it! Yes! <laughs> God! It's a good movie. I keep telling Wee to watch it because she could totally cosplay as Angela. She oh, she would crush Angela. I know. I sent her thing. I said I actually sent her this one. It was the guy doing Krampus, like watching uh, her do the dance in front of the fire. I realized how sexual the dance was. I sent that to oh, Wee. He's like, man. I just didn't answer. So I was just like, I just let her sit and think about that one. Well, and the whole thing too about that scene, it was a weird punk rock song. Yeah, that she was dancing to. It's a tone at the end of like, wow, wow. And she start tripping. Like, they set up the scene to where, like, so if you look at a trip light, it already skipped. But, like, they skip like, three or four lights and she in this part. And watching that movie, I said, that's where I would have died. Because I would have had to have some action. Yeah, 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 exactly. She was way too late. <laughs> like, right there. She thought, la, 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 la. Like, just her voice was just ridiculous. Oh my God, the the chick with the damn lipstick, man. Linnea Quigley, who is from um, uh, Return of the Living Dead. Who is she in Return? The naked chick that gets it, like I don't want to. Dude, that's trash. That's that's the same girl. I didn't know that was trash. Man, trash sticking up, boy. Um, First yeah. of all, in Return of the Living Dead, she was not that thick. All right, I never knew that. Man, I feel terrible. That's my, one of my favorite movies, too. I feel bad. See? Um, but that's a great movie. If y'all have never seen that, and we, if you watch it, you need to watch that. There's some death scenes. There's definitely some death scenes in Night of the Demon that you will love. Well, also, don't get it confused with Demons. That's a very different film. Very. I've seen people like, I, the, people get that mixed up all the time. No. So here's the other thing. Two things about Night of the Demons for me. Number one, it's not on my list, but it is definitely one of my favorites. Um, number one, eat a bowl of fuck. It's one of the best lines I've ever heard in a movie ever. <laughs> like, just eat a bowl of fuck. Just and flat then, out. Let's go straight to it. And then not only is my man gay, my man is black and survived the movie. Not only did he survive, he saved the lead girl to, like, get by. Like, right? what, what other movie where that happened? It, it doesn't. I mean, because usually, which we, that'll probably come up later, too, because usually the brother just get, you know, killed yeah. in the toilet while eating enchiladas, so. Eating enchiladas? Oh, 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 I know. Oh, I got that one. <laughs> I got that one. <laughs> he was also in Return of the Living Dead. So, oh, man, and that guy, the guy we talking about, he found such a good niche, a black punk rocker in the 80s. It didn't, wasn't nobody doing that. Everybody was like oh, gangsters. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, he found his niche. He was like, <laughs> Here's my body at work. I swear he had the same clothes on too. All right, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but um, right. I can talk forever about that guy. Oh yeah. Um, which we need to know his name. Like this is this is how old we are. It's like what was his name? I know right. he's in Wanna Man. <laughs> which all right? Here's my number seven. This one's gonna be a little harder. Maybe. The prop is Druid Stones. The line is. Is this the best you can do? Oh, Warlock. Which one? With the stones is Warlock 2. There's one. There you go. Oh, my God. Such a good movie. Oh, my God. His birth scene. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is, so it's my favorite director of all time directed that film, Anthony Hickox. I, lo mm -hmm. I love his early work. His first directorial debut was Waxwork. Then he oh, went wax to, work. then he did Warlock 1. Warlock wax 2, work. awesome. Waxwork 2, Sundown the Vampire Retreat, Hellraiser 3. Like, he, the, 
his so early good. career was all that I did the action film. That's a solid but, list. Um, yeah, that's that's what he started with. Um, so yeah, Warlock 2, love the like it was once again, it was a good guy, a solid good guys versus bad guys. I I love that dynamic. Because like the, I, I respect Friday the 13th, but I hate Friday the 13th. For like two major reasons. One, they're bad movies that are meant to be, they're trying to be bad, which kind of bugs me a little bit. Unless, right. except for six, because six went comedy with it. But like, you don't care about anybody in that movie. You're just waiting for Jason to kill him. You're just like, just stop talking. Please just die. Like, there's just, you don't care for anybody in those films. Until six, because Tommy was yeah. my dude. That's Tommy six. Was my dude. six was different. Six was like, they made it a comedy. Tommy was cool. Like, they went different with it. I'll even argue five, which wasn't Jason, but like Tommy was good in that too. Like it was a different mm-hmm. kind of thing, but um, but like everybody but Tommy, you're just waiting for him to die, right? You're just waiting for him. Like oh god, oh because I don't know if it's on your list. I'm sorry because he because he started talking about Jason. This, ladies and gentlemen, this happens when we talk. This is true. The sheriff bit it in such a cool way in that movie. That's another good death scene, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But. Um, uh, and Night then, of the uh, Demon, though, that his birth yeah. scene, his seeing his head slide out. Hello, mother. Like what? The- <laughs> Julian Sands too. Like, like I love Julian Sands. Just so everybody knows, you can see this at home. I'm drinking red wine from my shark, you son of a bitch cup. You son of a bitch. <laughs> don't put this. I, 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 do, I don't drink wine, so this is actually going to be. Oh, you better, you better watch it. We just found out recently that there is a Jaws ripoff. There's an Indian Jaws that apparently is really good. What is it called? Because that movie popped up somewhere. Because I thought even, even the poster, even the poster looked like Jaws. YouTube. And there's a Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Indian ripoff that apparently is really good. Really? I'll, show you the, I'll show you the list. I'll pull it up later when we get okay. to after. But here's, okay. This is the cool thing about this cup. Is that the shark, when you put your drink in it, the shark sits on top of it. Oh, that is cool. Isn't that cool? So he gets all, I'm pretty sure you can find this at Darkstone Entertainment if you want. You know what? Own. I'm only going to drink wine when I'm with you. This is my this is our thing. I'm going to have wine when I'm with Leja. Well, eventually I'm going to be having a sake of beer. So I'm letting y'all know now. Um, I don't like good. wine. I don't like wine. This is why Dracula doesn't drink wine. That's that is exactly why Dracula don't drink. Is it a sweet wine or a bitter? Because they got some sweet. idea. I don't know what it is, man. It's gross. It's called Gothic Red. Wine makers blend. Rich and smooth my ass. (laughs) And a motor words of Dave Chappelle. Fuck. What's your, what's your number seven? All right, hold on, wait. Before we get on that, here's the spell from that movie when he had hope to that girl. Oh, here you go. Tuck, tuck, turn about your whole life in dismay. Wreck them, I settle them, I throw them a decade, oh, yeah. thrice over a day. I stole the thrice and used it in one of my movies. Dude. The jester, he said, thrice, uh, if she denies him three times, then he gets to take her. Oh. Like that I was like it. I did this. I like, I realized now that I got it from that movie. Well, yeah. I, maybe I'll, maybe I'll watch, make we. I'm supposed to hang out with We and Toby in like a couple weeks. Maybe I should get them to watch Night of Demons. I love two more. Two is actually my favorite one. Oh, uh, and I know why you like two. You like the nun. Dude, I didn't think about that. Not, about that. not, not because of thing. Not for the reason why I like nuns, but because just seeing her. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Just leave that. John likes the John is like nuts because of the way that I like nuns. Not the ways I like nuns. My, my, my okay. people know. My people yeah. know. But so like no, it's also that you also had uh, the guy with water balloon hand, hand grenades, and like I mean there was there was like a full fun battle that goes on in that. And then the uh, it had a bigger budget. Angel became like a snake creature. Oh yeah. Did you see the third one? Yes. It was good. You didn't like it? I didn't like the guy that was laughing. <laughs> Oh, I didn't like that. Yeah, like uh, the that. remake was okay. I didn't like the remake as much. They they did all right with that scene, but I, I'm yeah, big it was okay. It just that. wasn't. It didn't have the 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 like the roughness of the first one. Right. It was too pretty. Royce, 
Royce has a challenge. He said, find a good horror film that doesn't open with animated credits. When a horror movie starts with animated credits, he knows it's going to be good. That's his that's his uh, go-to thing. Like when he watches a movie, he said, if they have animated credits, the movie's going to be good. So we have to try to find one that's not, which I haven't done yet. Prince of Darkness. Animated credits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Oh, it does. Yeah. So like wow. any film that's got animated credits, apparently it's good. That's his, that's his mantra. Uh, okay. what's, your, what's your number seven? All right. So we had to slub that around because uh, we crossed over. So I uh, will go with the prop. And one of the scenes is a beehive. Can't and the quote is, another little boy, that just wouldn't do. Ooh, maybe not. Originally, I was thinking Candyman, but Serpent in the Rainbow? No. Oh, wait, what is it? It's Sleepaway Camp. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, so I just saw Sleepaway Camp for the first time like two years. No, not no, 10 years ago. God, it's been that long. Like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't 10 years ago. It was five years ago because I worked with a guy from Sleepaway Camp and didn't know. I never watched the movie, so I felt guilty. So I went back and watched the movie. And I was like, holy shit, this is really good. This is really, really good. Uh, I understand feeling guilty when somebody break up one. Like, anytime somebody bring up Plan 9, they're like, he made Plan 9. I go, I'm, I'm, you don't have to watch that. You know, that's fine. It's I'm going to watch it because I've seen the preview. I actually like the preview. But, yeah, man, the cool thing about Sleepaway Camp was that you never would peg her as a killer because they, for some reason, they had this wrestler's hand. With every time she killed, all of a sudden, it's supposed to be oh, a teenager yeah. killing somebody. You have this monster, incredible Hulk, Lou Ferrigno type of hand. Yeah. Uh, so I but, got some. I'll power it up here. But um, I have a connection to that movie, uh, a big one. Really now? Yeah. So Plan Nine, the little, the, the younger brother in that movie, John mm -hmm. Jonathan Tierson, did two songs for my score, for my soundtrack. Oh, for real? Yeah. So that's so what I did was in 1959, I chose a bunch of songs from that time period and then had them all covered by people for my soundtrack. Oh, that's cool. And Jonathan Tiersen did two songs for the soundtrack. The biggest one is I had the director of Pokemon do um, one of my main themes, and he was fantastic. Dun, 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 dun. The director of the movie Pokemon, the one that went to theaters, not not the actual original Pokemon. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Pikachu? Uh Detective Pikachu? The so <laughs> uh, are you talking about Pokemon, the cartoon Pokemon 2000 when Ash died and all the white folks cried? I mean, all the Pokemon cried. That's the one. <laughs> Ash came back to life. <laughs> That's the one. I've never seen it, but he he directed that. He's also the voice of whoever the um uh the like the anti-hero is, not Ash, I guess, but whoever the other guy is that's always with him, that there's like an anti-hero is like fights with him but it's against him i don't know the oh yeah guy. one guy from, probably guy from team rocket um yeah right, right here. here is the soundtrack this is jonathan tierson from sleepaway camp doing a song for my film plan nine i'll just play a little bit of it just a snippet yeah oh and if y'all haven't seen sleepaway camp do yourself a favor and watch that movie plays every instrument. That is the twin brother or the younger brother from Sleepaway Camp doing a song, Jonathan Tierson. Wow. Yeah, that was awesome. But yeah, like, do yourself a favor. If y'all never watch it, then y'all need to. And she's one of the most underrated slashers known to mankind. Oh, yeah. Well, wait, was no, I've never seen the sequels. Mm -hmm. is, she, is it the same character in the sequels or is it different people? No, it's the same character. It's like, same character? they. They, because uh, because if, if you like the first one, you watch it. They, he basically shows back up at camp, but she changed the name kind of. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's still Angela, right? Yeah. But yeah, the, yeah. the death scenes are awesome. So the one I was saying about the beehive is that 
Yeah. She locked, she locked the stall door and dropped a beehive on the kids. Just stop drinking it. Just don't do it. Yeah, I got stop. it. I'm fine. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not keep talking. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Billy D. Williams in Return of the Jedi with the thing grabs his legs. Ah! Like, I, was like <laughs> <laughs> I used to do that all the time. I was like, ah! like, ah! like the best scream ever. He's like, not something like Colt 45. Ah! Hey, <laughs> hey, it was still a cool scream. You know what right. I mean? <laughs> he was just like Peter Cushing. Billy D. was like, oh, when his hair man. got fucked up, shit got real. Like, that, like if his hair's slick, he's good. Peter Cushing, same thing. That shit got messed up. Shit got real. Right. It was that time. It was that time, man. I'll play oh. a little snippet of uh, this is Eric Stewart, the director of Pokemon, doing a song for Plan Nine, who also is now in Ringo's band from the Beatles. That's what he's doing now. Oh, Ringo has a zone band. <laughs> he does. It's a band. Here you go. That's Eric Stewart. That's the director of Pokemon. Oh, wow. So we met. Oh, that's a whole other story. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. The sidetrack to the sidetrack. This is what I call it. I go right. sidetrack to the sidetrack because I get lost in translation all the time. We do this anyway. Yeah. Like, this is the reason why the podcast to be so hard because we'll drift off. Of, oh, but did you see this? So, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So what we're talking, we were talking, Night of, Night of Living, no, Night of Demons. No. Uh, sleepaway camp was mine. Sleepaway so what's the question? Sleepaway camp. All right. Okay. So we're on Stay number. On target. Stay on target. Oh fuck. Okay. This one. Okay. The prop is a wall hung TV. Oh shit. That's that's. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Nightmare on three three. It's got to be exactly it's on my list too. Same thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had to skip over because we we are cross sectioning a lot. I'm curious how this is the two things I want to figure out after we do our list. The ultimate list are the movies we both have on our list. That has to be the ultimate list. And then, oh, yeah. and then, what year do you think all of our movie, our favorite movies, came from? I, I'm looking at, I'm looking at mine now. I already know. Don't tell me yet, but um, yeah. I'm curious. Like, well, we're gonna know what our the top list of like, we both recommend is our favorite movies, and what year do we think the best movies came from? Literally, we're gonna dictate it ourselves. Right. Um, I'm real curious what that's going to be. Um, yeah, so Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Frank Darabont, amazing film. Um, like, for one, this is a this is, this is is controversial. I'm sorry for the horror people out there, but Freddy was invented by Wes Craven, but was really made... Oh, shit, now I'm breaking in front of his name. Um, <laughs> God, let's go back in time. Give me one second, because I can't fuck this up. Especially when I'm a controversial yeah. statement the reverse yep 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 uh let's see here. uh God, come to me come to me come to yeah, me yeah but you me. just said it and i don't no, forget not Frank Darabont. it's the producer it's um oh, okay. the guy who owns new line cinema um right i'm doing the same thing as y'all can see we're so organized no just we have bad memories is what it is robert shea okay so okay. here's the thing I'll start over again. Zip, 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 zip. I went too far. Now we're in the 70s. Going back. Right over. Okay, now I'm back. Hey, job, turkey. <laughs> oh, shit. Come on, game with me. Um, <laughs> sit in the back there. I'll put you back on there. All right. Um, no, they don't get in the very back. God damn it. You're going to give me. Give me. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> but if y'all get that joke, add me. You need to be in my life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The 1941, the Spielberg film. No. Okay. There's this brilliant scene where John Candy and I can't remember the actor's name is a black actor. They're in a tank the whole movie and they're racist. They literally throw racist jokes at each other, and um, one gets gunpowder in his face. So the black guy becomes the white guy becomes black. John Candy gets gunpowder in his face, and the other one gets uh, a flower in his face. So now he's white and he's black, and they're reversed. And the black guy looks at fucking John Candy and goes, get in the back of the tank. Best <laughs> fucking line in the whole fucking movie. He just looks like, get in the back of the tank. Like, it's just, it's so good. They've been at each other the whole movie. And then, like, all of a sudden, they both get reversed faces. And, like, they just laugh and go, it's just a good movie. It's a really good movie. 
Uh, I'm gonna have to. We'll have to get that. You have to send and that. Even one. Spielberg. No one like. Oh, that like. Sidetrack to the sidetrack. You brought. Uh, Opie brought up Duel. Mm -hmm. That's Spielberg's first film. See, I didn't know that was Spielberg though. He like Spielberg slipping stuff that you were hearing, you don't you don't think that's yeah. Spielberg. I mean, yeah. That's okay. All right, so. Nightmare on Three. That's our. Uh, we've been on our list twice. Right. What, what Which means you have to watch it. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, now see, the, the un, low key one of the best scenes in that movie is when the dude was doing the interview with Josh Agabor, and she's like, "Well, I think this, and I think that," and he was like, "You know what right. I think? What? Who gives a fuck what you think? You like, dude? Like, low key, great." I movie. got something. All right, so you've seen Spade Silence, right? Yes, yes, I've seen Spade. Spade gets, it, Spade gets his voice back. Mm -hmm. Nightmare on Street Three. Oh shit. Yeah, exactly. See? Yeah. So the only reason why I didn't pick up that, because I realized that even though all y'all love him, I can't stand Dark Spade. I'm, I don't even think if I'm ever in a movie with him, I don't want to see him. Like, if, it, if, if, if it's a scene that I see him, like, it don't need to be a fight scene. So <laughs> after this is over, I'll tell you another thing. Who okay. Dark Spade is, we discovered who he is like a year ago, mm -hmm. and his story is actually really sad. But okay. like, I'll tell you who he is later. I don't want to give it away until we get to the actual show. All right. So, what is your number six? Five, right? Is it five? No, you're on six. Okay. Uh, oh man. So if I'm remembering right, yeah. <laughs> yeah good luck with that, dude. Old man the Joe. Prop. The prop is an ancient book of spells, and two teenage boys. And the quote wait, is, wait, wait, wait. what can TV go show. wrong? It's not a TV show, right? Nope, movie. Two young boys, a spell, what could go wrong? A book of spell, ancient book of spells. And the quote is, what can possibly go wrong? What can go wrong? Damn. Or we should do this. It's not, it's not a midnight hour, is it? No. Damn, what is it? The gate. Yep. Yep. I hate myself. I hate myself. And just like that, John Johnson, you have been deducted. <laughs> I have lost credentials. I have lost credentials. Like, no, The Gate was so fucking good. That was such a good movie. Right? Do you watch Stranger Things? Yes. That last, the, the, the fight in the mall? Mm -hmm. Tell me that wasn't The Gate. That was The Gate. That was straight up The Gate. Fireworks? That's the gate. Yeah. But I think they, they hit so many 80s 80 stuff in there, which is one reason why I like it. I ain't it's 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 awesome. But the gate, it's a scene on the gate that that scared me. And it was the one where the body falls down and when it hit the ground, it separates into these all of man. It looked like a tool, yeah, yeah. it looked like a tool video, is Wait, what it looked like. But I'm oh gonna say another controversial statement. I love Charles Band, but some species stole the shit out of the gate. All right. Some species stole the gate. The little the band Radu's little figure, little creatures. Yep. Yep. Was but scary. I think it was the same. I think it was the same thing, though. It was the exact same creatures. I know they stole the gate. They stole the gate. <laughs> they like took those animated things and put it in their movie. Oh man, great movie. There's another yeah. movie that um, if y'all haven't watched, do yourself a favor, man. Yes, it's Stephen hey. Dorff's third film. It's fantastic, and uh, the sequel's good too. The sequel's good because the, the little nerdy guy actually ended up being like the badass, yeah, the guy yeah, with the glasses. Yeah, and yeah, it was cool. And don't play records backwards. Don't do it. Nope. Nope. Don't do it. All right. Playing so, records backwards is actually one of my honorable mention movies, but we'll talk about that. Okay. Yeah. No. All right. Here's my number five. We're on five now. Okay. This one's going to be a little harder. Here we Where go. Where is America? East or west of London? East. Like a lot. In like 400 years. I'm God. Oh, shit. And it's a horror movie? It's a horror movie. The prop is a fencing sword. For a horror movie? Oh, yeah. I have no earthly idea. Where is, uh, the line is, once again, it's, uh, where is America? East or west of London? East, actually. And 400 years later. So, see, he's going to be on guard. He's he's doing he's doing this because he know I should know this movie. The movie is Wax Kirk 2. Lost. Oh shit. 
see, I have to see. It's a lot of stuff. By the way, y'all, it's a lot of stuff on this list that I'm, I'm gonna rewatch. Like I, I have to rewatch. So okay. So here's here's my thing. I got a story with this one. Mm. The day I met Toby, right? Uh, we were at a convention. I met him at a convention in North Carolina. I was giving a speech there, right? And uh, I was uh, I was giving the speech, and I said in the speech uh, to a live audience, "I'm going to remake Manos: The Hands of Fate." And this guy goes, <laughs> <laughs> "That man was the DP of all of Hitchcock's films. Like he was the DP <laughs> of Waxwork or Hitchcock's Waxwork One, Waxwork Two, Hellraiser Three. The DP of that movie came up to me, he's like, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, "I'm remaking Manos: The Hands of Fate." Like, but like as I met him, the day I met to- and I met, I ran up to Toby, I'm like. Dude, I just met the the DP of Waxwork Two, and he's like, "What's Waxwork Two? Is like, you guy, I don't know. I just met the DP of like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, he's just, I mean, like what's Waxwork Two? And I turned to some guy at the bar and just started yelling. At this guy, he's like, "You did what?" I'm like, "Yeah." yeah. <laughs> and I know Toby said in that tone, "What what what is Waxwork Two? Exactly, he but, said that. I just literally turned to the guy beside him. I was like, "Dude." <laughs> well, like, screw you. Me. I'm gonna talk to somebody in this convention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Also, at the same time, I was hanging out with Toby, and like he was talking, he was just talking trash to me. And I looked at him, I started doing this. I can't scroll. You're still here. I can't. Like I, <laughs> I can't swipe, Ralph. Okay, so what is your number five? All right, so I couldn't decide on this, so I did both of them, right? Because I was told this is an important thing. Okay. One of these movies was made in 1982. One almost made in 1951. So I'm gonna try to do the remake or sequel. Uh, no remakes. Okay, the remakes. Okay. All right. So I'm going 1951. Okay. One, the prop is ice. Okay. And the quote was be like, the "They're thing. most closely the related to plants instead of animals." The thing. The thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brilliant film. Brilliant film. And it's Loki like the all right. So the thing that was made in '82, yeah, was was great. Like I loved it. I liked all the frost, the all the, the the practical effects. Loved it. But the 1951 was yeah. low key a terrifying movie too. Doors. So did you notice the doors? No. Okay. When you watch the 1951 movie, they're always opening doors, trying to figure out what's on the other side. And then the one last time they open the door, he's there. Like it's a oh whole yeah. Movie. Like they keep opening doors and like nothing happens. And the last time they're just like, oh, fuck it. They open the door. And there he is. Like it's just like it was so well done. Oh, man. And he's a big sloth looking alien. Yeah, too. Yeah. Got like a little pinhead thing. This is this big, huge thing. And I watched that because I, I always run the film buffs. It never happened. I was talking about the thing. You're like, dude, have you not seen the original? And I'm like, man, this is the original. Like, no, 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 man. This movie was made back in the day. Yeah. And as soon as it come on, you know it's a remake. But it's, it's so okay. Weird. It's so different. Like they're 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 similar, but they're it's like my plan nine is nothing really like plan nine from outer space. Like they're they're very similar in the, the structure of the story, but it's mm-hmm. completely different. Like it's it's its own thing. Um the two bitness, I don't have no personal stories on the thing, but oh no, I do. Fucking A. All right, so um, <laughs> uh plan nine, once again, the lenses that we rented were from the thing. Oh, that's cool. We wanted the same lens package. When it came, it had dust on it. We had to literally like dust them off and we put the lenses on there so it would look like an old school John Carpenter film. Like that's what we wanted the whole thing to look like. And you here's geeked a big out a little, You geeked out a little bit when you opened it up and it was like dust on it. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to save the dust. The DP said, no. I said, no, I got to save the, we got to put the dust in like an envelope. And he's like, get out of here. And like, I was just like. <laughs> if you don't get your weird ass out of here. <laughs> Or anamorphic, which is my first time shooting with anamorphic lenses. Which to to, uh, to, to get technical for a second, the reason how te- um, anamorphic lenses are different from standard lenses, like let's think of um, Star Trek, the new Star Trek, JJ Abrams. You know mm-hmm. the the rings of light that pop up all the time, like the the um, like when a light hits the lens, yeah. it gives like a, a ring of light. Anamorphic yeah. lenses make a line. Oh, that makes sense. Now that you say that, I see it. Yeah, it's a line. It's not a circle. It's a line. Um, and that's why, like, I was obsessed with them. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That is cool. Yeah. Once again, John is showing me things, telling me things I have no idea about. 
So <laughs> you'd be like, give me a win. Why why the thing? Why was that one for you? What was the thing? Well, of course, the 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 80, the 51 was just, oh my God, for like you said, it was so well done and the acting was so on point. Y'all gotta realize if, if y'all not watching any of the horror movies that was dead way back in the day like that, you are missing out. The acting is almost always good, even when it's corny. Even when yeah. the movie is corny, the acting, because you always have like you tell some of these are stage actors. Yeah. You know, and they can make a scene, make or break a scene. But oh man, um one, I, it made the list because I thought that I would like the original, not the original, but the, the remake better. Yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, I yeah. kind of like the 51 better. Well, you, that's what John Carpenter fell in love with. He fell in love with that original, which got him to make the, the sequel. So, like, it, I mean, obviously there's something to it. Right? I mean, it's a good film. That's uh, a great film. Two bits I know on uh, the uh, the remake, they finally gave away who was an alien in the final scene between Keith David and Kurt Russell. You told me and it broke my heart. This is well, all right. So if you don't want to hear this, everybody hop out. Yeah, if y'all don't want to know, if y'all don't want to know this secret, it's just like when we figure out what the three she sales was on Demolition Man. If you don't want to know, oh wait, you talk about the back. Okay, yeah. yeah um, so. so if all every time somebody is the alien, there is no light reflection in their eyes, which is very difficult to do. So like even looking at my glasses right now, like you see. For all kinds of light reflection. Right. You see that? So what they had to do was weird. If I could do it, it's so hard to do. So essentially they had like a little plastic piece that they put so there's no reflection in their eyes. I'm not gonna say who. Go back and watch the last scene. One of those characters does not have a reflection in their eyes. He's the yeah. end. And when you and when you told me that, I went back to look at that scene. I was like, son of a Yeah. And if you go back and watch the whole movie. Everybody who's an alien has no light reflection in their eyes. Wow. It's, it's brilliant filmmaking. That's just brilliant. And in fact, they, they did it as long as they did. I'm a sucker for practical effects too, man. Yeah. Oh, that was a kid. That was just some kid that, like, that did it. And the reason why they got so in deep and right with me. So the, the reason why um, that got so um, uh, technical is they got snowed in. They were trapped there for six weeks. So they just kept making effects. They're like, why all this stuff? It's like, all right, keep making shit. Ugh. All right. I'm sorry. I all got right. side I'm literally on another train. I'm going to like England. Um <laughs> all right. It happens. We any any else? of my friends that's watching this podcast, they already know that or listening. They they already know that that's that was gonna happen with us. So like um, okay, so we are on. My num wait num wait that my number five I four. did we're four oh, number four was that your four? No, that was my five. That was your five. Okay, so this is my four. Here's a quote. Well, I'll say this: the the prop is a bow and arrow. Okay. The quote is, "You take the mummy. You take the mummy." Damn, this is too hard. Let's be fireman. Uh, I made it harder. I'm laughing because I know the quote. Yeah, I made it harder. And I can't place the... I'll give you a uh, second. Uh, um, um, no, it could be wrong because they'd be considered a comment. I don't know if necessary horror. I was going to say Monster Squad. There you go. That's it. Okay. All right. So that's not it. I mean, eating a pig and like, they, they they kill children. That's not a, that's not a, that's a horror film. That's a, they, they, <laughs> yeah, probably, and if that's a fucking horror film. <laughs> you a little girl by the face that says, give me the amulet, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that's a horror film. That's not... Now, he, he had to make this harder because the quote everybody say from that movie, like the wolf man has nards. Exactly. And that right then I would have known. But yeah. So this connects directly to our Lost Boys movie because Lost Boys saw Monster Squad fail and fix the fix the the problem. So Monster Squad was actually a bust. It didn't do well in, in theaters at all. It didn't do well on video. It didn't become a cult thing until like way later, till DVD. Right. So the reason why is that it's an adult film told from kids' point of view, but they market it for kids. Yeah. So when kids went to go see it, they're like, the fuck? Like, it's just like, it was way too much. <laughs> He's gonna kill your son. You're like, it's like, no kid could like handle this shit. Like, but then Lost Boys was an adult film told by kids' perspective that was marketed for adults. Right. And that's why it did better. Oh, man, it's such a good movie. It's a good movie. 
Oh, it's so good. It's just such a cool idea of like taking like essentially the little rascals and putting them up against monsters, like the classic monsters. It was just so cool. And they really, they went for it. They weren't Fred, um, Fred Decker was the director. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I'm gonna make the monsters. Like these are the fucking monsters. Like the, the Wolfman is one of the coolest Wolfman of all time, still to this day. Right. The scariest fucking mummy. And I swear the Wolfman on that is the guy of uh, a movie called Ice Pirates that the alien came out and started singing, "Hello, my baby. Hello, my darling." Weird movie. No, that's not him. That's not him. But I know who you're thinking of. That, that they was look really, a lot alike. That was John Hurt. <laughs> Who reprised his role? And that was Spaceballs with the "Come on, my baby, come on, my darling." But um, Spaceballs. Yeah, but the guy you're thinking of was in the show Martin. He was the only white guy in the TV show Martin at the radio oh, show. Damn. I that, forgot about the white guy in Martin. Was a Wolf fan. He's also. Okay. A dude, um, but that was the that was the the that was the guy. He was also in Get Shorty. There was that a WAP nine. You know, like that's uh, yeah, it's a uh, I'm Italian oh, movie too. Oh yeah, but no, that was the actor from that. He's also in Fright Night Part Two as the half werewolf, half vampire guy. Who was? Oh, that's uh, him. Yeah, yeah, that's my dude. That's yeah, my he's dude. Awesome. Yeah, he's he's so good. good. The scene when he morphed and scared the dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that. Oh wait. Anyway, we'll talk about that later because I know yeah. it's not the streets on it. But yeah. All right. So we, that was my number five. Uh, four. Oh, wait, I, have I have a story on that one. Hang on. That, yeah, that was my number four. So the story I have to tell, I was at a screening of Monster Squad recently, and the two uh, uh, the two guys, Ryan uh, Lambert and um, uh, I can't remember his name, um, the guy who played uh, Sean, were both yeah. up there, and I said, I had a question. And uh, the funny part was is that people started talking about me being there already. So like they were asking questions for me because some of the people in the audience recognized me. I was right. just like, have you ever seen Skeleton Key? And I was like, the fuck? Like, I look back and like, <laughs> like, so, like, you were already fucking with me. So, like, um, I was there and I said, here's my question about Monster Squad. He said, yeah, go ahead. I said, what happened to the third vampire chick? Because if you watch the movie, Ryan Lambert is throwing down on three vampire chicks coming up. He shoots one with a barrow. He stabs the other one. What happened to the third one? <laughs> she was smart. She got the hell out of town and started her own coven. That's what so happened. John heard me say that, left this chair, climbed through the audience. Like Royce got scared. Royce was like, Do I have to fight Sean? Like, because he was coming <laughs> at me. And he shook my hand and said, The only other person who asked me that question was John Garvin. <laughs> that's great. That is like, great. Oh, that's awesome. That was my by story. the way, John tells the coolest stories. No, I just I just I've been I fuck up a lot in front of famous people. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, that's like that's how that's how I story. All right, what's your number your number four? Oh, I'm gonna have to change. Oh well. Uh, Wine doesn't t- doesn't taste bad anymore, so things are happening. Right. Um uh, all right. Oh, that's that's so general though, so it'd be hard for you to guess it. So I'm trying to that's think. Right, of- make it hard. It's fine, it's fine. Um the prop is an ancient pillar outside a village. And the quote is, I can't, the um, the myths about him is real. Ben Helsing? No. Nope. You might not even seen this movie. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, what you got? It's Rawhead Rex. Clive Barker. Okay, yeah, I have seen it, but it's been a long time. It's been a super yeah, long uh, time. We, I recently found out that the story about Rawhead Rex in that town is actually real lore. Like, it's it's really? a town over there that is lore about Rawhead Rex, and that's why it was geared more for that. Let me look this up quick because I I think I know something about this. Um, I, I'm pretty sure wrong, but this might be one of the only films that Clive Barker directed. Because I think I think even the like the the they shot where like the stone pillars and stuff was like real, and then of course oh, they that's cool. So uh, that's that's the reason why I need Ope around because Ope would just be like, Ope, what's this? Oh, fun fact. <laughs> yeah, I'm a fun fact guy myself. It's, it's the, fun fact is better than um actually. Right. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, but I could be wrong, but I think 
this was actually directed because Clive Barker only directed Hellraiser one. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious if he directed Rawhead Rex. Rawhead Rex was like, it, he's my favorite creature movie. It's, I know it's, it's odd, but he, he's he, he's up there. Like in some of my chat groups, they were like, so you need to find a horror name for yourself. Oh man, Rawhead Rex. Like it wasn't no hesitation. If I had seen that, I've been all over you. I've been like, oh, okay. All right, buddy. Right. So yeah, Rawhead Rex. Yeah, such a good movie. Good call. Good call. It's got to be on there. It has to be. Oh, I got something on that one. Oh, there you go. He, if he if he comes out here with the head of Rawhead Rex, he's going to have to send it to me. I'm, I'm just letting you know, like right now. I'm letting y'all know. Uh, if he comes back and oh, I almost thought he had it for a second. I go, oh, God. Have you ever seen this movie, Runestone? Yes. They but I barely remember. Huh? And the, and the, the big alien monster, the big monster, the demon? Mm hmm they're using pieces of Rawhead Rex. Well, I can definitely tell, like, the head shape in the mouth. Yeah, exactly. Huh. Yeah. I mean, damn. They recycle a lot of props. They do. They have to. It's just, it's like, it's, it's too expensive. And they have a, a studio with just full of stuff, so they just go grab stuff. Oh, that'll come up later. In the right. Podcast. Right. So what, tell me about Rawhead Rex. What is it about it that made you fall for it? You know what? It was some about, like, the interaction... With like the monster and the kid. Okay, sure. Cause he was like tearing apart stuff. He like gonna be scared, but he, he it wasn't like he was gonna mess with the kids. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, you know, like he he would avoid it at all costs. And then it's one scene in the movie where they hurting him, and you see Rex kind of look, and you kind of see the monster feel like his feelings are hurt to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's like like I'm just doing, I'm just being me. You know, like I, I was yeah. made for this specific purpose, and he just look, and you like see it almost looked like the the prosthetic of the eye, like his eyes were up with tears. I need to watch that again. I remember now, like that's coming back to me. That was a, I mean, that was a really cool scene, right? Because it went the whole scene. He's a roar. He basically don't talk. He just roars through this whole yeah. thing. And it's one scene. He kind of falls and he looks and he goes, like he almost looked defeated. Like it almost he thought about like what am I doing wrong? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, oh, you're, you're, it's God damn. I need, I'm, I'm going to watch that tonight, maybe. So, <laughs> so I, there's another movie that kind of took after Rawhead Rex a little bit. Um, actually, it could have come first. No, it didn't. It didn't come first. So I brought this up to Toby and we, and they had no fucking clue what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Do you remember Watchers? Yeah, I remember Watchers. Exactly. Like, why did they, they were like, they, it made me feel stupid that I brought up some old movie. I was like, it's not at all. This is a big movie. This was, this is huge. It was Corey Haynes. Watchers was awesome because he was seeing through the view of the monster eyes. And, yeah, like, and it was the, the dog that was a robot that like was being hunted by. Yeah, fucking A. Like, I'm not, it made me feel so great, dumb. Movie. Hyper smart, hyper smart. Had yeah, that old, like it might, like, but it's, it's not a rare movie. That was in theaters. That was everywhere. Dude, we watched, we watched the hell out of Watchers, man. That was another yeah. movie that was on our list that we watched. I had to go back. I literally went back and looked it up because I felt so stupid. I was like, did I just pull up some movie that no one's ever heard of? Like, no, I looked at it, it like, it was, in theater. it was in theaters with Corey Haim. Yep. Well, I was a big Corey Haim's, Corey Haim's fan, too. So, so, like, both the Corey. So, like, I watched almost every movie he was in. Oh, yeah. I have a sad so, thing about that one. Yeah, we didn't wear that. Uh, you know. <sighs> anyway. So oh, wait, much more. Wait, 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 I'll wait for another movie on that one. Anyways, right. okay. So, all right. Thank you for redeeming me a little bit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So that what's what is your wait? Do you do you see your number four? You yeah. So you. Okay. So number three. This is a rare one. I'll give you this, and you might not know it. Is this a good idea? Now that you mentioned it, no. I know this. The prop is a Necronomicon. Wait. So. Off top, it's not Evil Dead. No, it's not Evil Dead. Um, then that would be Jason Goes to Hell. It's not Jason Goes to Hell. Oh, shit. I don't know. It is called Unnameable 2. No. So the guy who gives the line is John Reese davies who was uh, from uh, Lord of the Rings. He played Gimli. He was also in Sliders. Mm -hmm. um, it's it, it's a love, it's an H.P. Lovecraft story. They made two of them, the Unnameable 1 and then the Unnameable 2. These are amazing films. Uh, Unable Two is the better one of the two. It's also the only character that's in one more than one, or an only human character that's in more than one Lovecraft story, which is Randolph Carter. Okay. 
Randolph Carter was basically the historian at the um, oh, uh, the Miskatonic University that was hunting monsters. I love so many names of these 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 groups. Yeah, that's, that's all Lovecraft stuff. <laughs> right. But it's such a good movie. And you know what? You and I will get in here one day and we'll just watch it. So I want to watch it with you. Like I think I love that movie so much. Oh yeah, man, I check it out for sure. But yeah, but you know, my people, we we talk a lot doing movies. I'm just playing. If y'all didn't laugh at that joke, then you don't need to be in my life. <laughs> really? No, over the the no Italians, the, this is the difference between Italians and the blacks. The blacks will <laughs> yell at the screen. The Italians are, ma! Ma! <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, like, right in the movie, we'll just start yelling back this way, where the blacks yell at the screen. The Italians and the blacks are very much alike. Man, we really are. We really are. So, all right. So, that's what's your number three? Uh, all right. God, you're gonna get this. So I got to I got to figure well, out I mean top three, it's gonna be easy for us to probably get all of them. But it, it, it's such a uh, all right. So the prop is a mask. Okay. And the quote is <laughs> you keep on messing with me, I'm gonna kick your ass, you crazy bitch. <laughs> That's wait, wait, wait. I know which part is it's part five? No, is no, six? is it six? No, no. What? You're just pulling me all together. What? Yes. What? <laughs> what? 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 You ready? No. Oh, you, oh, oh, you finna hurt. You hang, on, hurt. hang on, hang on, hang okay. on. Oh, you know this. As as I take my juice of the movie. Oh, oh. Shark piss. So, <laughs> you, you ready? Yes. Demons. <laughs> Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. <laughs> that was the one that was inside of the um the the uh, building, right? There was all the traffic. movie theater. Yeah, the yeah, second yeah. one, they walled off the yeah. whole city area that this outbreak had. So, of course, it's the brother. It's the brother that looked like I call him Buff George Jefferson, right? <laughs> he, he, he he had the George Jefferson haircut, and, and his girlfriend. Right, his girlfriend was the one she put on a mask and it cut yeah. her face. It was a right. birthday, man. and um, when it was a birthday party, where she like, right? So, yeah. when he was running the scene is where he was running and they were trying to like barricade everything, yeah. And it wasn't even one of the demons, it was somebody else like trying to get out. And he's like, Look, you move, you dumbass, bitch. I'm, you know, I, you know, yeah, like, yeah. so that that's that's cool because you said number two, not number one, number one was the theater. Number one was the theater, this and they did that later. scene in it with the brother. Number two, they walled off. It was the first yeah. movie I've seen. They're like, we're not going to try to beat this. They, they just walled off the whole damn city. That whole yeah, block so just so walled good. off. So good. So, yeah, good call. That movie's good. That movie terrifies me. The scene in that movie that terrifies me, which we don't talked about before, yeah. is for some reason the demons come down the hallway with their glowing eyes. Yeah, terrifying. Yeah, 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 I yeah, skipped yeah. that scene to this day. That, that whole movie is terrifying. Like they like we weren't ready for that. We weren't ready for that. Like they, no, they were like man. the first one, they're kind of like kind of silly, campy kind of stuff. This one mm -hmm. gets campy too, but like man, when there's when they kill, they're scary as fuck. Right? They the were. Claw, they were. Oh, yeah. oh man. All right. My number two. Mm -hmm. We just cut up our girlfriend with the chainsaw. Does that sound <laughs> Fine to you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that is evil dead. I say that quote all the time. It's like funny. even when I'm in live and somebody be like, it's fine. I'm like, fine. We just cut up our go, go go the chainsaw. Now which one? It's two. No, I, all right. So the reason why I say two. Yeah. Well, it is two. It is you're right. Is is because they completely remade one. They just took out everybody else. But I remember Evil Dead One. I seen two different cuts of Evil Dead One. Yeah. Okay. Sure. And that's that's the reason why I always say I, I'm bad about saying. Some people say that's Evil Dead One. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's two. So this is the thing. This is where we fuck up ourselves. So the difference between Evil Dead and Evil Dead Two is it's called the Evil Dead, and the Evil Dead Two is just called Evil Dead Two. The right. other thing is. We've been calling it Nightmare on Elm Street. It's not Nightmare on Elm Street. It's a Nightmare. A Elm Nightmare Street. on Elm Street. I don't say it. I never do. I go even even my fucking movies are in the ends. When I put an ABC order, I put it in N versus mm -hmm. N. 
Like, because I never think about the A Nightmare on Elm Street. I never think about that. Right, right. It's a lot of stuff like that. Like the question of who's the first killer in the first Friday the 13th movie. Oh, it's the mother. Right, but a lot of people don't. Oh, it's Jason. Though. It is Jason because Jason does kill her at the end. So yeah, if you if you don't watch the sequel, if you just saw the first movie, Jason True. killed her at the end. True. True. Oh, uh, that was a creepy scene too. That's a scene terrifying. I watched that movie in the end of the scene and had to walk home in the dark. The most terrifying walk I ever did. Now let me get that to me. I saw that and had to walk past the graveyard. Mm-mm. Oh yeah, I literally that, that I had to walk past. I went to a screening at a local theater. Um, they did a horror movie night, and uh, I had to walk. Oh god, it was just it was awful. It was awful. Yeah. Damn it. Oh, I got another one about Night Living Dead. So I was at a convention in uh, Pittsburgh, which don't go to Pittsburgh. But the first zombie um, from the movie, the first Night of the Living Dead, the guy, the guy, the graveyard zombie, mm-hmm. he was an old man. He walked up to me and I was like, you, you, you from Night of the Living Dead? He's like, he was in his makeup. Uh-uh. Like, you scared the shit out of me. He followed me for the rest of that fucking weekend. I was going to my room. And I look back and he, he does. Like, oh, just, no. he didn't come close, but he stayed at a distance, scaring the shit out of me the whole weekend. Just fucking. And ladies me. and gentlemen, that's a good way. To make Jock punch you in the face if you do that. I'm just letting you know. No, he was too far away. He was smart. He's down the hall. He, yeah. <laughs> he was smart. He, he knew what he was doing. <laughs> I ref, I react to fear with violence. It's not fight. It should be fight, flight, and violence. Well, okay. So there, there's a difference between okay. So there's reaction violence, which something goes bop, and you go, Psh, you know that. Mm-hmm. Then there's the violence of like you have to sit and think about what to do next. <laughs> and this is something that happened to me. I was at another convention called ShivaCon. And um, the scream had just come out. Mm-hmm. And we were sitting in the lobby, and a guy in the scream costume walks by, right? And I look at him and I go, Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Like, that was it. I just made a joke. But then for the rest of the night, the scream guy was following me, which was funny. It was cute. And then I'm going to my hotel room, and he's at the other end of the hall, and he pulls out a knife. No. I, t- I sat for two seconds, and then I charged him. I started running at him full speed, and he ran. Turns out there were six of them, and they robbed the gas station down the street with that knife. Oh, damn. That knife. <laughs> yeah, that's a real story that's in the paper. Like, that's that's oh. like, I saw him pull a knife, and I was like, you know, fuck it, I'm going to die killing the screen guy. And I just, I just charged at him. And he took he took about two seconds, he just went like, and just ran. <laughs> I was like, no, this is how I die. This is how I die. We're going. Great. I'm not going to let you follow me in my hotel room and get me later. We're going to do this right now where I can see you. Right. And then they all got arrested, like right after that, because they had robbed a ga- uh, 7-Eleven in the screen. There's six of them in scream outfits. 7-Eleven got robbed more than anything any convenience store on the planet. So. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So that was what's your number two? Two. All right. I'm gonna try to make this as difficult as possible. Okay. Oh, I gotta change the prop though. You got me on the last one. The prop. The prop is. A oh man, a sealed container, a metal sealed container. And the quote is the government tried to do some kind of experiment, you know, to like make us super soldiers, but then they realized when they did this, the body started jumping around. And oh, you messing with me, ain't you? And my son, and the phone rings, they go, ah, and he's on the phone. Yep, Return of Living Dead. Return of Living Dead, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Best thing about that whole movie, because people don't realize that there was a lot of comedy in the first Return of Living Dead. It's not oh, a yeah. comedy by any means, but there is comedy in it. The sequel's oh, yeah. a straight-up comedy. They have this overtop scene where everybody gets their weapons and they hide and they let the zombie out, and there's one guy without a weapon in the very back. That thing goes past everybody with the weapons and just tackles the guy without one. That is the funniest <laughs> part. Like, like right. that makes me laugh so hard. Like it's just this overtop shot of the zombie bursts out, runs past everybody with a weapon, and goes right for the guy without one. Funniest goddamn thing. Oh, uh, but the the low key most uncomfortable scene in that movie is when the the dog cadaver come to life. Oh yeah, and headed and whimpered. You're like, oh. So that is an indirect sequel to Night of the Living Dead as well. So like essentially there were two guys. So he would the guy who directed that worked on Night of the Living Dead, and he mm-hmm. went off to do the Return of the Living Dead series. And, mm-hmm. and Romero did the day series, Day of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead, that kind of thing. Right. Um, 
So the other thing that most people get confused is that Return of Living Dead is where zombies ate brains, not Night of Living Dead. Right. Night of Living Dead, they ate everything. Yeah, they flesh. They were flesh eaters. Yeah. But when you say like zombies going brains, brains, that's Return of Living Dead. Like that's that's. Mm-hmm. Why do you eat brains? The pain! Uh, the pain of what? The pain yeah. of being dead. The only like, scary thing, if you love me, you'll let me eat your brain. You see what you did me do? You made me break my hands off. <laughs> Which is fucking Tommy. Like, you I didn't want that. I didn't want, I didn't want Tommy to be that guy. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Great movie. Another one y'all need to watch. That... That, oh, that's changed my whole, that changed my whole genre of zombie films because they a little bit of comedy helps yeah. in certain movies. They're also fast. They ran. Yeah. Talk. Yeah. Send yeah. more cops. Yeah, <laughs> Send yeah. more paramedics. Yeah, please. But you, your, your guy was the uh, um, the guy who gets pulled through the door, right? Um, yeah. 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 He's such a fun. I, we gotta look his name now because this is gonna we, we're disrespecting this man, but he needs to be said. He, the guy is so funny. Oh man, that old cat! Because he popped up in a lot of stuff too, man. No, I'm talking about the the black guy. Oh yeah, he, I know he was in Joanna Man. He was yeah. in Life. We talk about him all the time, but we don't ever say his name. We need to say his name. It's some simply too. I'm pretty sure he was also in. Um, oh, and by the way, Miguel, Miguel Nunez. All right, so I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell an Opie story. Okay, so Opie met this guy at Horicon. Right, and he can because Opie's favorite uh, uh, Friday Thirteenth is five, right? Really? So he went to take a picture with him, and the guy was like, "He killed me!" So Opie got a picture of the guy, like like pointing at him, you know. So like, oh man, I was so jealous of Opie. My favorite for him, he was actually in uh, Harlem Nights. Yep. Yeah, Quick. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was our city hall, but there was a guy with him who was just like, You shot, you, you made me shoot. Uh, oh, he says it with the line. I can't remember the character. Junior, name. you made me shoot Junior in the back of the head. Why'd you yeah. shoot Junior in the head for? <laughs> <laughs> you shoot Junior in the head. <laughs> but Ernie in that film, the guy who was the, the Nazi, did you notice that? That he had, had like a fucking World War, like he was a, the, the guy who uh, burned the bodies was a Nazi? No. Yeah, go back and look at the background. He's got Mein Kampf on the wall. He's carrying a Luger. Like it's like they they made a like they I don't know why they did it, but they like he is a Nazi. Like he, they're, all the stuff on his walls is that. But he's also weekend at Bernie's. He's the hitman that keeps trying to kill Bernie. That like yeah, not a great movie. But I don't know why they did that in Return of the Living Dead. It's just like just his only his background like reveals what he was. Like they don't say anything, but except for the Luger, he's got the Luger. Right, just a random Nazi. Yeah, that's just weird. I wonder, I wonder whose call that was. I'm sure there's a documentary on that somewhere. He was doing another movie or something. And actually, you know what I could do? I know Tom Matthews. Um, we could get him on the show. Like, if we do a few of these episodes, we can get Tommy on the show. Dude, dude, uh, I might fanboy a little bit. Yeah, oh, of course. He's, he's just a cool guy. Um, so, and I was talking about putting him in one of my films, so we're in discussions anyway. So I'll see if I get him on the show. Okay. Thank um. You. Okay, so my number, oh, we're on one. We're at number one. Yep. Okay. Okay. The prop is a movie prop cross. The line is, he's going to kill Amy. Probably me too. I made this hard. The so prop, what's the point? A movie prop cross. Okay. The line is, he's going to kill Amy, me probably. Is it Fright Night? Very good. That, 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 that took, took, it took me a second. It took me a second. It made it, hard. it made it harder. But like he's carrying movie props. Yep. You got to have fate, fearless vampire hunter, for this to work. Now, the yeah. only thing that I will, I will agree to with this is that the choices of Derry Jandridge <laughs> it was a little weird. <laughs> a little weird. <gasps> yeah, it just constantly. I don't know where he got that from. Um, that's Chris Sarandon, who I got into a rubber band fight with um, at a, a con Mariah and I were fighting with him. And then the, the funny thing is, do you know who um, 
Uh, I, oh God, uh, William. I'm um, breaking his last name. He, he was a uh, flathead in, in Dick Tracy. He was also in. Um, yeah, uh, no, no, you said flathead, so I, I, I got you. I Flat got top. You. He was beside yeah. me, and somebody rang a bell. And I put up boxing like went like this, and he did it too. And I was like, no. That's so cool. <laughs> no. That's so cool. My ass. <laughs> um, we yeah, had Chris Sarandon just basically like he saw me and Mariah. He liked Mariah a lot. Like he liked Mariah a lot. I wonder why. Yeah, and so like we're sitting there, and all of a sudden Mariah's like, psh, like rubber band hits in the face. It looks like Humperdinck just shot Mariah. And I'm like, <laughs> I gotta do something about this. So I went and bought rubber bands, and we just started like blasting him. That's cool. That's yeah, so cool. Um, yeah. So Fright Night. The first time I ever saw Friday Night, I saw it at a drive-in. But mm-hmm. this was um, the way we had to, because we couldn't afford to, we were young. So we couldn't afford to get into the drive-in. So we built a little wooden platform on a tree in the woods. And we climbed up on the wooden platform and watched the movie. Right. But there was a missing reel. One of the reels got damaged. So I never saw Eddie get turned into a vampire. Which was still alive at the end of that movie. Well, no, oh, yeah, I agree with that. Because he pulled the stake out. Mm-hmm. But um, but no, so like I went from like everybody let's go home, okay. And then all of a sudden he's like, let me in, Peter. And he's like, What are you gonna do? And I was like, What? Ah, ah, like I just like I did not see you get turned. <laughs> I was like, he's a goddamn vampire. And I was like, the fuck is happening with Stephen Jeffries right now? I don't like this at all. And then I'm in the woods on a platform looking down, like, God damn it. <laughs> like this terrified me to no end. I loved it so much. We got to, we got to find an escape plan. Always the escape plan. Yeah, I love that movie. The fact that it goes back and, and pays homage to the, uh, the um, well, they call him Peter Vincent, but it's obviously Vincent Price and mm-hmm. Peter Cushing. And, mm-hmm. uh, and of course, the, the one and only Christopher Lee. Like, mm-hmm. it's just like, like the, all that, like paying homage to that, plus doing like really modern horror, taking the Ghostbuster librarian puppet and making it the puppet that, uh, that he gets. Yeah, you told me that. That threw me off. That threw yeah. me off. I love Make- that film to no end. Man. Oh, all right. Give me your number one. Number one. I don't know if you've seen this, but I have brought it up before. Uh, so the prop is. Uh, who? How can I make this harder? Well, let me take a guess. Is it called Squirm? No, it's not Squirm. OK, because you said Squirm earlier. So I was like, I don't know. Yeah, squirm was on my alternate list. OK. Uh, which also was a remake. Um, um, but the prop is a noose in a cemetery, and the quote is, "When a man of God commits suicide, it'll open up the gates of hell." Zombie movie, kind of sort of, yeah. City of God, damn it! City of the Dead. <laughs> is the City of the Dead. Is that what it was called? It's City of the Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was those were was Italian film. Yeah. Oh, first of all, I play a monster Italian horror. Oh my oh, god. Yeah. The the lighting alone is just like using the reds and it's like film noir, but with like you know color. That was really cool. I love how they did that. Oh yeah. Uh, Dario Argento. Yeah. It, it made yeah. oh, and when yeah. demons an Italian horror too. Yeah, it was. No, I think it was Dario Argento did that. Let me look that up. Oh. Uh, but it made the list because just the thought of like somebody have complete faith. Because the whole thing is like you commit suicide, you go to hell. But a man of faith killing himself to open up the gates of hell was just like, like oh my god, you know, like um, yeah, demons was Dario Argento. Went into so, another great practical effect movie. Um. But yeah, that 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 was my number one because it just throw. It was did so well. It was a movie that was because you can get uncomfortable, but that movie was uncomfortable, scary, and yeah. terrifying. Yeah, and I know a lot of y'all saying scary and terrifying the same thing. No, 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 no. Like that movie will have you not sleeping and clutching your damn blanket like Linus off the peanuts. You know what I mean? Like that oh, yeah. movie is scary, man. Uh, well, actually, wait. He wrote Demons and Demons 2. He did not direct them. Okay. Right. But he was God, the writer. He's a weird guy, man. Well, let's see who did City of the Dead. 
and find out what other guys are. I actually don't know a lot about this movie, actually. It's the first one that you brought up that I don't know a lot about. I remember the poster was awesome. Yeah, the poster was cool. Um, and the scene opens up, the movie opens up with him walking through the cemetery. Yeah, it's a 1980 was the movie. Mm-hmm. All right, what we got here? We got directed by Lucio Fulci. Jesus Christ. I should have known that. <laughs> he I want to let y'all know. Right, go ahead. Sorry. He directed Zombie 2, the Italian one, where they all, at the end they go across the bridge to New York. Yep. Let's see what else he directed. He directed... Let's see. Last thing he did was Voices from Behind, Hansel and Gretel. Ooh. Uh, Sweet House of Horrors, Touch of Zombie 3, Devil's Honey, Conquest, New York Ripper, The Black Cat. I see Black Cat. It's been a while. Um, oh, God. Okay. All right. So this is why I know him. Um, he's a. Uh, what was that? You should see the look on his face. Uh-huh. <laughs> so he directed The Eroticist, the parody of The Exorcist. The porno. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. In like 1972. I may have partaked upon that movie. Many, many right. movies. There's a movie we need to watch. I've never heard of this. It's from 1966. It's called How to Rob a Bank in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the name of the movie. It, it sounds like that would be a dangerous thing. I wouldn't want to rob shit in, in Italy. <laughs> he also directed the original White Fang. Okay. Yeah. God, man. I know the name, but I have not recognized in a lot of these movies other than um, City of the Dead. No, because he did a lot. I remember looking up zombie. before. Because I was trying to find that zombie movie when it opened up and the zombies come out the airplane. But we, we'll we talk about that afterwards. Okay. All right, so, well, that's our that's our list. So let's go through them real quick. Just list them off. List down your 10. What was your 10 through 1? So then I'll, I'll make our, our, our super list. All right, so... Um, I had to check stuff out because I skipped around because we crossed over. So okay. all together, I'm just going to read Demons, Return of Living Dead, Rawhead Rex, The Thing, 82 and 51, Lost Boys, The Gate, Night of the Demons, Elm Street 3, Sleepaway Camp, Prince of Darkness, and Night of the Living Dead. 68. Okay. So we got two super films. Mm-hmm. Lost Boys and Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Oh, yeah. Two films that are on both of our lists. Now, you now, on my alternate list, I have Puppet Master 1. Okay. Why 1? Um, some about the dog, like, I, was, I wasn't scared of the puppets. Like, the movies, but, but I wasn't scared of them. And, um, and I was always are. weird about, like, I can find something like this. Like, because I used to help people clean out houses. Like, I can always find, like, an ancient book or, like, some experiment that somebody did, you know, like that, that was almost a thing. That's the reason why I like Ghoulies, was also on my alternate list. Part one? Yep. Okay. So it turns out the ultimate year for horror movies, so far as Lejean Crowley and John Johnson is concerned, is 1987. Yep. Lost Boys and Nightmare on Elm Street 3 both came out the same year. Yep. So I had uh, most of my movies is like 87, 86. So I want to find out what other horror movies came out in 1987. Damn. Lost Boys. The Darkness came out in 87. Hellraiser. Predator. Evil Dead 2. House 2. Jaws of Revenge. Oh, Jaws of Revenge. That's one of my favorites. A lot of people don't like that one. Let's see here. I'm going through the list now. Let's see what other movies came out in 1987 that are horror. Angel Heart. Bad Taste. Bates Motel. The Gate. Prince Ooh, of the Believers. I forgot all about the Believers. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. Blood Diner, love that film. Uh, Blood I Rage. I seen something else on there. Uh, Creepers Lloyd's right. Creep Show Two. Oh damn, that was a good year already. Yeah. Dead of Winter, Dolls, Doom Asylum, Evil Dead Two, Evil Spawn. Hmm. From a Whisper to a Scream, The Gate, Ghost Rider, Ghoulies 2, mm-hmm. Hell High, Hell Razor. Hell, hell freaking high, man. Yeah. House 2, Howling 3, Killing Spree, Lost Boys, Lucifer, 
Mind Killer, Mirror of Death, Monster Squad. See? Munchies, my favorite. Oh, shit, Munchies. Yeah, yeah. Near Dark, Necropolis. No, Night no. Games. Near Dark was 87? Yeah. Damn. Uh, Psychos in Love. Redneck Zombies. <laughs> Irish Irish Wolf, uh, Irish uh, Cub, and I are obsessed with that movie. Right. Um, Return to Horror High. Return to Salem's Lot. Scared oh. Stiff. Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. Garbage Day! Yeah. <laughs> Home Party Massacre 2. That's where you got the guitar. Mm -hmm. Street Trash. I seen Street Trash. The Video Dead. That's a rough movie. It really is. That's that's the big one. There's some others in there, but like that's, that's yeah, big. yeah. That that list we go ahead. You need to link that list up because I want to watch everything on that list. So 1987 is now our year for horror mm -hmm. movies. And uh, yeah, so anybody wants to come in, this is the end of our show. We're now going to move on to after hours. Just talk to people who wants to come in. Um, message me on or Elijah on um, Instagram. You get an Instagram. So I'm letting you know now. Um, I'm using this phone, so message him. Oh, message me. <laughs> the link to our stream you can come in but thank you for watching or watching and listening to our first ever show of monster noir i have been john johnson and this has been la crowley and i'm cool we don't have a <laughs> yet. I'll, I'll pay the bill tomorrow <laughs> thank you for spinning a yard here at the monster noir we have been your hosts Lajah Johnson and John Crowley. Wait, what?